expectation in my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. We do give honor to God tonight who is the head of our lives. We give honor and praise to our president. Both pastor Dr. Twyman and God for our next for our evangelists. Amen. Evangelists, Dr. Rogers. Phenomenal uh, job. Amen. We thank God for our dean. Amen. And all of the officers and members of Noam. Amen. Special um, acknowledgement to um, the United Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. And our beautiful first lady in my life. Amen. And uh, my other church down in Brooklyn, the New Bethlehem United Baptist Church. Amen. Uh, the word of the Lord is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse number 10. Matthew 24 and 10. And it reads in this manner, And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. You may be seated in the presence of God. Lord, I have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. And for a few moments, I just want to uh, talk about the subject, lecture, the message. Do you know what time it is? It's time to turn back to God. It's time to turn back to God. Church, we're living in some very evil times. Events that are taking place in our nation and the world are all evident that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is on his way back. I could have never imagined that there would be a time that we would witness so much hatred and uh, so much destruction and such a high disregard for human life. All you have to do is turn on the news, read the newspaper, or turn on your um, social media, whatever it is, and look at all of the unbelievable acts that are taking place in our midst today. Every day we're losing more and more young men to the streets. Every morning we hear of some place where there was another mass shooting. And all of this often leads to uh, protests and violence. Things have gotten out of control. Mm -hmm. Things are certainly getting worse. Mm -hmm. And so we are living in some perilous times. Yes. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul told us in 2 Timothy 3 and 1, he said, Know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And this church, Satan, is having a field day on us. He has infected our society with corruption and with horror and with terror on every hand. Right here in our own nation uh, of America, home of the free, America, the land of opportunity, America, our home, sweet home, right here in America, in recent days, we have witnessed dishonesty in the White House, corruption in the State House, injustice in the courthouse, mass shootings in the schoolhouse. And though we don't really want to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it, uh, but there's a whole lot of co compromising hypocrisy and backbiting and backsliding and mediocrity, traditionalism, and division in the church house. Yeah. And for all appearances, uh, we are indeed living in the last days. The Bible says in Revelation 12 and 1, or 12 and 12, it talks about woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down unto us to having great wrath because he knows that he only has a short time left. You see, I look ahead of this thing. I see how this thing is going in. And that's why it seems like we're witnessing so much um, evil at a time. But make no mistake about it tonight, even though it seems as though times are bad. Even though we're witnessing all this hatred and terror and we appears to be in our 
the darkest hour, and even though it seems as though Satan and his demonic forces are gaining more ground every day, I bring you some good news tonight. That as Christians and as a church, we don't have to fear because we are still on the winning side. Who are the winners tonight? As a matter of fact, we've already won the victory. Yes. And so I take comfort in knowing that God still sits high and looks low, and He's still calling the shots. Yeah. The Lord is in control. But it doesn't seem all this, some very strange things are happening. We see a whole lot of strength in the text. Uh, Jesus says in the text that uh, at, at that time, many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake about it. The things that we are witnessing are a direct result of the greatest virus ever known to mankind, which is sin. Yeah. Sin comes in many shapes, uh -oh. many sizes, yeah. many colors. Sin is measurable. It looks good. It feels good. It even tastes good. Y'all don't know how to look like that because if it didn't, you wouldn't do it. See, it will take you further than you want to go. Make you stay longer than you want to stay. And one of the greatest sins that many are suffering from today is the great sin of apostasy. Apostasy from the Greek word apostasia means a defiance or an established system or authority, a rebellion or an abandonment or a breach of faith. And can we just be real there? There are a whole lot of folk that turned away from what they know and turned away from what they were brought up to do. And so we would be better if folk would just turn back to God. In the book of Lamentations, chapter 5. Uh, you all know the story when the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem and God's people were excommunicated from their homeland. Uh, Judah had committed the greatest sin, they committed apostasy. They had abandoned their religious relief. And to be told, a lot of folk today have abandoned now the, the word of God. They have turned away from all that they know just so that they can uh, uh, have what the other nations and heathen nations um, had. Mm. Put God on that burn. Mm. And ultimately, Nebuchadnezzar deported more than 10,000 leaders and the best of Judah to their Babylon, and only a shell of Judah remained. Mm. And then Judah's new king, uh, Zedekiah, was no better. He was just as wishy-washy as his predecessors. And all of this happened because Judah wanted what the heathen nations had. In other words, they valued the pursuit of power and prestige over their relationship with God. What is it that you're putting in front of your relationship with the Lord? Here we are in uh, 2023 being stuck and sucked in by the power and prestige. How uh, that Congress playing games with people's lives, uh, playing politics with people's lives. Uh, um, this is, we ought to be real tonight and know that America has lost the respect of other nations in the world. Thousands upon thousands have lost wages, lost jobs, and most of them have lost Hope. Well, but I wish I had a church tonight who knows that our trust and our hope is not in politicians. Our faith and our hope is not in a vaccination or in a president, but it is in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. And so I want to encourage the church tonight, don't be discouraged. Don't be despondent like the events that are unfolding before our eyes on a daily basis. Why? Because as long as as the sun continues to rise. Yeah. As long as we have health and a reasonable portion of health and strength, as long as the Lord has not come back, we still have some hope. Yeah. And so, yes, we need to deal with the sin of apostasy. We need to turn back to God. Yeah. And I'm almost through, but there's something else that we're dealing with. We're dealing with some division. We deal with a whole lot of division. Division yes. is the word of the day. Yeah. Look at how we are divided. Mm. Oh, yes, we're divided as a culture, divided as a society, yeah. party differences. Um, we saw what happened there on January 6th a couple years ago, and we're still dealing with the effects of that. Yeah. We have all this division. Uh, 
uh, and not just in the world and not just in government, but because I'm talking to the church tonight. Yeah. We are divided in the church. Yeah. Yeah. Divided yeah. over policy, divided over the de uh, denomination, but we divided over protocol. Yeah. And so the question becomes, how do we solve this problem yeah. of disunity? Yeah. Well, I believe in Queen Latifah. She said, uh, we need some U N I T Y. We need some unity. I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul in Philippians 2. Paul tells the church of Philippi to demonstrate their faith by dwelling together in unity. He used words like being on one accord. Words like having the same love for one another and being of the same mind. And I just want to help you. The only way we can have unity, we need to know that unity can only come up through Jesus Christ. And so as I get ready to take my seat, I want you to know tonight that there are still those who want to follow after the world. There are still those who still, uh, think time is going to happen, but you still have a chance. Oh, yes, we can pass off our worldly ways and move forward with the Lord. And so the question is, do you know what time is? It's time for us to turn back to God. It's time to turn from our wicked way. Time to stop turning up and turn back to the basics. What time is it? It's time to reverse the errors of our past and turn to God's unchanging hand. The one who said, I am Lord and I change. Now, what time is it? It's time to correct the four choices we made and turn toward the one who will lead us and guide us in the right direction. It's time to turn back to God. If you're looking for healing, you need to turn back to God. If you're looking for deliverance, you need to turn back to God. If you're looking for hope, it's time to turn back to God. I mean, you know there's deliverance when you turn back to God. Yes. There's a blessing when you turn back to God. Yes. When we turn to God, God says he will hear us. That's what he said in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, 